Uh, my name is Charlie Nogales. I'm a Vice President of Engineering here at Emulex Corporation. It's a well-established fact that heat not only impacts the reliability of electronic components, but also degrades their performance. High-performance products that are engineered properly utilized augmented cooling techniques. This approach ensures the device operates within the specified operational temperature thresholds and protects the device from thermal cycling that can significantly reduce the life expectancy of the device. Uh, there are two types of cooling methods, passive and active cooling. Passive cooling devices, heat sinks and heat pipes, are directly attached to electronic components such as processors. A layer of heat conducting material is then applied between the heat sink and the device to facilitate efficient transference of heat. Active cooling leverages mechanical devices such as fans to provide cooling. Uh, the proper response to that question depends on the amount of cooling required. Heat sinks are more typically used as a common method of cooling the actual physical chip device. However, their dissipation cap capabilities can be augmented through the use of mechanical cooling, such as direct attached fans. Typically, such configurations are applied to the host CPUs. Now, given that a fan is a mechanical device, there is intrinsic potential for mechanical failure, which can impact, impact the reliability of the device it's intended to keep cool. However, with regards to server to SAN connectivity devices, such as fiber channel HPAs and FCOE CNAs, heat sinks provide ample heat dissipation capabilities. Case temperature is pretty much exactly what it means, what it says. The case is the temperature at the case of the device or the chip, as a lot of people refer to them. So if you were to put your finger on the case or the top of a chip, that would be the case temperature that you would feel. The junction temperature is the actual temperature that the semiconductor is experienced on this in the design that is the most important aspect of the uh, of the design and what you want to do is to keep that as cool as possible absolutely not you typically hear such statements when there's a lack of understanding for the application of heat sinks specifically at Emulex, it is important to understand that heat sinks are not used as crutches to compensate for poorly designed devices. If you take a look at components within a server, heat sinks usage is viable throughout the design. CPU, the memories, the I.O. devices use heat sink for effective cooling. Thereby, the application of heat sinks is a common use in high performance applications. At Emulex, we take into consideration the server environment which our fiber channel HBAs and FCOE CNAs will operate in. The fact remains that no two servers or data center environments are alike. Given this variability in the operating environment, Emulex solutions have been over-engineered to ensure the highest level of performance and the reliability in the broadest range of operating environments. Server to SAN connection devices, such as fiber channel HBAs and FCOE CNAs, play, play a critical role in the data center performance and availability. Therefore, careful consideration must be made when selecting such HBAs and CNAs. You don't want the HBAs or CNAs to become the weakest link in the data center. Even from a physical perspective, no two servers look alike. Their internal thermal characteristics vary depending on how they were designed and configured. CPU selection, cables, adapters, memory modules can all impact the heat generated as well as airflow within the server, affecting how the HPA or CNA is properly cooled. 
Emulex has factored such variabilities in the design of HPAs and CNAs, ensuring reliable operation without compromising the performance. The thermal images below can best answer this question. These images of an Emulex LPE-12002 and a QLogic QLE-2562 8 gigabit fiber channel HBAs. It is important to keep in mind that the most critical component of an HBA is the I.O. controller chip. To that end, all Emulex LP-1200 family variants use a heat sink to ensure that the I.O. controller is efficiently cooled for maximum performance and reliability. QLogic, on the other hand, has, not, has opted not to use a heat sink. The first set of images shows the thermal characteristics of the Emulex LPE-12002 HBA compared to the QLogic QLE-2562. It is clear that the LP-12000 operates significantly cooler at 121 degrees than the QLE-2562, which is operating at a 148 degree temperature. Next, we can proceed to remove the heat sinks from the LP-12002 I.O. controller and compare it to the QLogic uh, HBA. The results are noteworthy. The I.O. controller of the QLE-2562 registered 148 degrees, while the I.O. controller of the LPE-12002 registered only 136, demonstrating that even without the heat sink, Emulex operated 10% cooler than the QLogic design. The fact remains that when a product fails, it must be replaced and fixed. In either case, you must track it, transport it, and apologize to the customer for it. Losses will be much greater than the costs of the manufacturer, and none of this expense will necessarily recoup the loss of your reputation. So at Emulex, we design performance without compromising reliability.